morning, team. Call came in at 7 o'clock this morning. Mum, Jess Meredith, went to wake them, found the beds hadn't been slept in. And they're not answering. Morning, D.S. Armstrong. The hit television series The Bay may well have been wowing viewers on ITV in recent weeks, but on the Isle of Man, another bay has been the subject of much attention since the end of January. Let's go back to Wednesday the 30th of January and mandate at 1. It's gone 10 past the hour. Ambitious plans for a 400-berth yacht marina in Ramsey have announced this lunchtime. The man behind the proposal is Harbour and Maritime expert Robin Bromley Martin. He's been giving evidence to the Harbour Strategy Committee this morning. We'll hear his thoughts on what should be happening in Douglas in Mandate at five. Tim Glover suggested to Mr Bromley Martin that marina proposals for Ramsey are nothing new. My understanding is, and one should remember that I'm a relative newcomer to the island, um, is that there have been several other um, projects promoted for marina bus inside the harbour and one outside the harbour back in 2010. Not, none of them have come to fruition. None so of them have come to fruition. So, uh, yeah. It's not a good track record to start with. <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah. what sets yours apart then? Uh, ours is going to be the first marina proposal whereby there will be 24 by 7 access to, to the, 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 the sea. And that makes it a um, very important safety related port for any vessels transiting the Irish Sea because at the moment there is no and anybody transiting the Irish Sea in rough weather will not come to the Isle of Man um, either to get into Peel or into Douglas with having to wait outside in rough swell to get in. This this will be apart from perhaps the odd day in the middle of winter when any self-respecting yachtsman is sitting in the bub that, that, that there'll be literally 363 days a year access to the to, to Ramsey Marina. Now we've got the uh, the South Harbour Wall. We've had to say where it is, and it, it's it's from there, isn't it? Across in front of where the bowling alley is, uh, towards the, the pier. down down to the pier. Yeah. So we 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 we, we have um, basically in order to get the depth of water, we need to dredge out roughly just under half a million cubic meters of sand. And rather than spend a lot of money dumping it offshore in, in the Irish Sea, it is our view that we should put it and pump it and, uh, up onto the beach and reclaim an area on the beach, effectively, as you say, from the South Pier and the harbour entrance down to the, uh, the, the Queen's Pier itself. Robin bromley Marson, more on that story online at the Max Radio website and more on the interview and mandate tomorrow morning from 7.30. Let's jump forward to mandate the following morning and more details about the Ramsey Bay Marina project from Robin Bromley Martin. We're going to claim roughly 12 hectares, which is just under 30 acres of, of the beach, of which uh, just under half of it will be developed. So that is the bit running from the bowling alley to the north end of the reclaimed area, which is the south finger of the harbour entrance. And there will be some commercial um, properties there, but largely it will be residential and in keeping with the Ramsey urban conservation area next door. I'm assuming that any project like this is going to need a big breakwater, isn't it? <coughs> yes. Bigger um, than anything that's... It's not there, is it? It's going to need building. Yeah. No, we need to extend the, that existing finger breakwater out about 300 metres, and then it would turn south towards the um, outer end of the Queen's Pier for about another 350 metres. That's going to cost, isn't it? Yep. That's, that, a, that, major that's a major job. civil engineering It's a major civil engineering, yeah. No, that, 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 that is a key element in the cost, and clearly it's, it's got to stay there for a very long time. We reckon that um, having done some quick calculations, bearing in mind that it's difficult to... Uh, uh, a portion cost between the a dredged area and a non-dredged area, but we're talking probably um, it, it, the um, marine works in the region of um, twenty-five to thirty million pounds. Who's going to fund that? Basically, there will be two funding uh, sources. One is um, the profit from the, the residential development that we do between the bowling alley and and the existing harbour entrance. And the balance of around 40 million would, would come from the private sector. And we have various uh, plans afoot to, to look at the um, private sector, be it from uh, infrastructure funds through to actually the um, yacht owners uh, being able to buy 
uh, forward their their, their uh, berths in, in the marina. How much government involvement would be required for this? None at all. Simple as, yeah? Simple as. Just to yeah. give you planning permission. <clears throat> yeah, all we, all we need is the... Um, effectively, we're asking the government for a two years exclusivity in which to get planning permission and put the funding together and everything else. But we believe, yes, that the, it, this could be funded in the private sector quite easily. What a sort of time frame have you got on this? If, say you got within that two-year period the planning permission, how long would it take to construct this big breakwater and the pier itself? Well, given the weather we have up here in this part of the world, um, and clearly we have a fairly short construction window. So we are hoping that we can start work uh, in 2020, April, May 2020, and have the bulk of the um, breakwater in place by the autumn. And then we, that means we could then work protected through the winter in behind. So we would hope to get the first pontoons, the first boats into the marina, for the summer season of 2021. And who would it be appealing to, uh, the the marina at Ramsey? (coughs) You've mentioned it's going to be 24 hours, seven days a week. Uh, That opens it up, doesn't it, to a lot more business and potentially waiting outside, as you put it, in the rough weather. Yeah. No, it's very interesting. There's some very interesting reports that the Highlands and Islands Development Board and um, the British Marine Federation uh, sponsored a few years ago now. They effectively have broken down, segmented the market for for visiting yachtsmen uh, into three. There's the sale from yachties, there's the sale to yachties, and there's the sale past yachties. The sale from yachties are the people who moor their boats there permanently. And we believe that we can attract, given that people could have uh, waterfront properties, quite a lot of people from across to come and keep their boats here permanently. Secondly, places like Dunleary with a thousand boats moored there in marinas, or even Whitehaven, Kukubri, or places like that, um, they could. that's a nice day's sail to, to, to Ramsey to come for a long weekend. And clearly we want to make Ramsey attractive enough for them to want to do that, both in terms of bars and restaurants as well as other attractions. And then the third and last category is that there is a surprising volume of transit traffic, that, of boats going to and from the west coast from further south. And if we can become a major stop-off point uh, for that transit traffic, we we believe that uh, we'll have a significant number of overnight visitors doing that. Robin Bromley Martin. So what was the reaction of the people in Ramsey? Alex Watton went to the beach where the plans will see a radical alteration. I actually think it'd be a good idea. Yeah. Bring visitors to the place. There's plenty of room on here for everybody, people with dogs, people without dogs, people with a boat. I'm surprised I don't see many more boats here anyway. I mean, I suppose. I mean, we want you want to get some. We want to get people to Ramsey, but uh, yeah, I think we'd have to look at the plans a bit more. Well, I suppose the benefit to the town would be it would bring some extra resources in, I guess. But uh, it seems a shame to destroy this beach. I'd have to see the plans, but it doesn't uh, warm my heart so far. Alex also spoke to Ramsey Commissioners Chairman Andy Cowie. Why this particular stretch of beach? I think there is there are some technical aspects to it that make this a little bit easier. It's a little more sheltered than the north side there is an area of special scientific interest on the north promenade at the Moorock side uh, which obviously can't be disturbed and that would have a big impact on any development plans and it's near to the town centre which has got to be a good thing for any potential visiting boaters um, or residents. I suppose from your perspective it really is the tourist numbers that would be of interest. Oh indeed yes uh, it, it would a successful marina will bring in a lot of visitors certainly in the summer uh, there will be jobs created. It will provide certainly work for the, uh, the businesses around the shipyard and that, that area. And, and there's, there's talk of trying to develop a marine hub in Ramsey, which would be great, bring, bring the shipyard back to its former glory, servicing a lot of those boats, which will need work. Talking about a marina in Ramsey isn't a new topic. It's something that has been going on for decades. From your perspective and from your position, I suppose, how optimistic are you or how realistic do you think that this is actually going to happen well, who's to say? Uh, there's an awful lot of hurdles. There's, there's a significant financing burden, uh, the planning permission, not the least. Uh, there's a consultation exercise which needs to be undertaken. And there are quite a few technical concerns uh, with with the actual development itself and making sure it works, silting up and the like. Uh, the only good benefit is it, the, the marina doesn't affect the operation of the harbour, so uh, our shipping services will be unaffected, uh, the fishermen and the Solby River as well, which to suffer any detrimental effect, which was a problem with the original marina proposal. 
So we're talking about uh, and two contentious things here, really. It's Marina and also pretty much up to the Queen's Pier, which again is another issue that's been coming back and back. Could it have a knock-on effect, hamming up some support to get that sorted? Say if there's a brand new marina here in Ramsey next to an old iron pier, could there be an effect to, to get that moving? Yes, I mean, certainly developers have spoken to us and uh, they are very aware of the work on the iron pier and they, I think they see that as quite an integral part of the development. Having such an imposing structure alongside the development can only be a good thing for both parties. I'm, I think there is some talk of trying to have some sort of mutual cooperation to get the, the pier completion finished. The Chief Minister, Howard Quayle, also gave his reaction to the ambitious plans. Well, I'm delighted that um, the business community out there has confidence in the island to be discussing a £100 million contract. However, the land is owned by the government and obviously they will have to go through the normal tendering processes. It's not a case of just handing over the land to them. We would have to go out for expressions of interest to enable uh, to see if there's anyone else out there who may want to do a similar project before we go into negotiations with that company. But um, let's see what, what, what happens. It's, it's very ambitious. I would dearly love to see um, that sort of investment in Ramsey and we'll, we'll just have to watch the space and maybe this time next year we'll be able to have a chat to see how it's gone. You say you'd dearly love to see investment in Ramsey. Is that the right kind of investment in the right place? Well, it's something that's been crying out for a while now. I, I, I think a marina and obviously the, these are business people. They've looked at the only way of this working financially for them is, is, is to build property. But anything that brings investment into our island and, and into the north of the island, uh, my Mother's from Ramsey, so I, I, I have a, you know, I have a love for Royal Ramsey, and anything that will help it grow and be successful and provide better facilities for the people of the north, then of course I'm going to support that. Sitting on a darker bay, wasting You're listening to Island Life with me, Tim Glover, and a look at plans to develop a marina in Ramsey Bay. Now, after all the initial talk, a public meeting was called. Interest was huge. All 600 seats at the Mountain View Innovation Centre on the Jerby Road were sold out at the ticketed event. Free shuttle bus services were provided at one of the biggest public meetings of recent years. Sean Cowper was there and had this report. Fully booked days in advance of the meeting, there were few spare seats at the Mountain View Innovation Centre. David Doricott and Robin Bromley-Martin followed their presentation with an hour-long question and answer session. I spoke to Mr Bromley-Martin about some of the issues raised. Basically, the num- I'm not a chartered surveyor, I'm not an estate agent, but I have to say two separate people both on and off the island have told us that um, residential units of the kind we're proposing within the uh, perimeter of a, a marina do attract a premium and therefore at uh, three to four thousand pounds a square meter well, that's the sort of price that we should um, be looking at. Um, uh, I appreciate that's a lot higher um, but I mean uh, we are aware of people uh, or a particular person buying property along the waterfront there on the basis that it will increase in value up to these sort of levels. So there is a wild expectation that um, we may achieve these these um, uh, <laughs> levels of uh, value of new properties. Uh, as to the extent we're relying upon that money, clearly it makes life easier to be able to do that but no, as I said, there are other, there are other forms of um, funding that we could look at. Um, clearly, um, we're going to have to anyway because we're not going to build all 150 units in one go. We do them phase because the last thing we want to do is to kill the property market in Ramsey because that would shoot ourselves in the foot. So, um, yes, there's a, there's a, one, one advantage, if I can get a bit political, is that um, advantage of Brexit is that a lot of asset managers in the City of London put a lot of money into what they call infrastructure projects and they're not going ahead none of them are going ahead because no one's investing so there's a lot of money burning holes in pockets I've discovered in London so uh, it may be that um, pension funds who like a, a low steady income uh, would could be attracted to something like this. 
Right. There were a couple of people as well that mentioned the, the size, the 400 births. You yourself said that there is a waiting list um, that government has discussed with you already for um, local people looking to birth their yachts on the island. How confident are you that you would be able to fill those births? Well, I have to be honest with you, as I think I said in the presentation, we started at 250 uh, and the DOI asked us if we could raise that to 400 because they were concerned there weren't enough, that wouldn't be big enough. Now, I mean, 400, we didn't take much persuasion because a 400 birth marina is a lot more profitable than a 250 birth marina. Among those in attendance were several members of Tinwald and Ramsey Town Commissioners, including Ramsey MHK Laurie Hooper and Chairman of the local authority, Andy Cowie. I think a lot of the questions that were asked are questions people have already asked, asked me, actually, and in telephone calls and emails. Uh, there's been quite a lot of interest in this, quite understandably. So the, the questions, I think, were people just trying to dig deeper into some of the statements that were made, trying to get a better understanding of, of exactly what it is that's going to happen and exactly what this, this piece of Ramsey might end up looking like in the next five or ten years. Yeah, there's, there's clearly a, a tremendous amount of detail still, still to be added to the, these proposals and that can have a big impact on the final solution as well. So, um, people are very interested in, in that level of detail, even at this stage. What do you make of this exercise as a whole? Would you like to see more um, people working on projects like this engage with the public this early on? Very much so. I, I think it's, it's fabulous to, to broach these ideas to, to the public and invite everyone along who's interested to, to see what the, the concepts really are and get a clear picture of what's going on. Yeah, I think when you're looking at redeveloping some of our towns, it can't be on government to do that all the time. I think seeing these kind of private initiatives come forward is, is going to be absolutely essential to, to the island growing and continuing to develop and evolve. And I think if that's going to happen, then public engagement and engagement with the community at an early stage is absolutely essential. One for you specifically, Mr Hooper. They talked a little bit about um, leasing the land and that the government would have to vote on that. It would go for a Timwald vote, rather. If this was on the paper next week or this month, would you vote for it? If this was on the paper this week, I, th I think the answer would be no. There isn't enough detail. They haven't gone through the process. They certainly haven't gone through a proper tender exercise. They haven't gone through any environmental studies. All these things are on the cards. I think come back and ask me in two years when they've done all the prep work. Uh, but at this stage, like I said, it's a very interesting concept. It's a very ambitious concept, and it's, uh, I think we should welcome that, and we should support them through the process to go through all the right stages they need to go through to actually flesh out, is this, is this workable? Is it, is it going to happen? There were some concerns about how the project would impact the infrastructure of the town, both as politicians but also as residents of the town. Is that something that you're worried about? It's something that has to be considered, clearly. Uh, I think the infrastructure of Ramsey is very solid. Uh, we have all the facilities that we need. The town is already developing rapidly. Uh, as one of the uh, quest questions mentioned, there's a huge number of new houses and developments coming to Ramsey anyway. This would be just another development that, that confirms how Ramsey is thriving and is certainly the place to be. I'd echo those comments actually, you know, Ramsey does have quite robust infrastructure, we've seen this quite recently with the MUA de deciding to decommission their local power plant, they've decided the infrastructure we have is, is robust, uh, but it, it's a valid question to ask, we're looking as a government to try and uh, grow the economically active population, the Tim will approve the locate strategy uh, last month, uh, which is, is designed to try and encourage more people to relocate here, obviously as part of that there will be pressures across the island on some of our infrastructure and we are going to need to invest in developing that, I think that goes without saying. I also caught up with Ramsey MHK Alex Allinson. What we've seen in other marina um, developments is apart from just the birthings themselves, you have all the add-on jobs, all the support jobs here. And I think Ramsey would definitely benefit from those if this, got, if this went ahead. But we've still got a long way. The main thing is that we, with Ramsey being up in the north, the jobs would be for, for people in the north. Um, it'd be, be, you might get some people commuting up here from Douglas, but it would be for people in the north. And what I'd be really keen on doing is actually making sure that our colleges and schools could teach those skills, whether it be hospitality, whether it be technical, whether it be engineering, to actually support this sort of development. One concern that someone in the audience tonight raised was about the potential impact on infrastructure, and particularly she mentioned doctors. You've, you obviously have experience working as a doctor in Ramsey. Is that something that you would worry about as well? Not necessarily. What we've done um, in Ramsey, and certainly the Ramsey Group practice, is looked at the number of new houses that are going up and adapted to that. We've had more GPs coming on board. We have had some recruitment problems, but we've got a new GP starting in the next month, actually. Um, what we need to do is have, as I said, sustainable development. So a lot of the people who'd be coming to Marina like this would be visitors, but hopefully it would attract some new people to live in the north. So we'd need to look at our schools, our, our health service, all those other things that support what is a, a growing and vibrant community. Up here in the north. It wasn't just politicians in the crowd, though. The majority of the audience was made up of residents who wanted to hear more about the proposals. An excellent presentation, very clear. Um, and I'm thinking, 
in terms of a hundred million pounds worth of investment, when would the government ever be able to match that amount for Ramsey? So you're, so really, you're in favour of this project? Very much so, very much so. I also happen to be a sailor. Ah, so I'll, would, I'll it be a, would it be something you'd use? Yes, because I'm a volunteer skipper for Sailing for the Disabled. So it would give us a 24-7 access and we'd be able to double the number of sails um, each month if we had the uh, necessity. I was very impressed with the way it was conducted um, and uh, the information that provided. It was interesting. Are you, are you in favour of the project? <laughs> Generally, yes, but I do have some questions which hopefully will come up more as it develops. Did you feel this did answer your questions? It gave a lot of information out, uh, but I think there's still a lot more to come. Absolutely fantastic. We're so for it. Conducted very professionally and um, hopefully everybody who was here will think consciously about what has been said for the future of the island as well as Ramsey. Sean Cowper with that report. Well, the topic came up at the recent Any Questions session at the Ramsey Town Hall, hosted by John Moss. we just move on to another subject which is much more local and that's the marina here in Ramsey. Obviously, £100 million... Pounds uh, a lot of people saying, yes, this would be marvellous for Ramsey. Um, but, but there is obviously, it's a difficulty in getting it from point A right the way through the, the structure. Do you think a marina will happen, if I can put it Roger Tomlinson? don't think it'll happen in my lifetime. <laughs> I've just come back, I've just come along the uh, coast road from Laxey. And as you come down the hill into Ramsey, I see the bay the Ramsey Marina, where the Ramsey Marina is going to go. And as an existing resident of this island, I would be loath to see that view disappear. Because it's not only a view, it's also a facility that is used by families. And that is often very much regarded when we talk about economic issue, because the marina is, is promoted as it will bring a benefit to Ramsey and a benefit to the economy generally. Now, I happen to have a couple of very close friends who are sailors, and one of their criticisms that they don't come to the Isle of Man is they haven't got a berth that is suitable, that is easily accessible. A 24-hour berth they can get in any time. A 24-hour berth, yes. Yeah, they, and this will give it to them. They are, absolutely, they are absolutely convinced that this is what the Isle of Man needs, a marina where... People can berth their yachts 24 hours a day. So I'm in a bit of a dilemma on this, whether I support it or not. And uh, I've got to hear the arguments uh, in, the f- in the coming weeks and months and probably years to see uh, which way I'll come down. Let's go to Richard Radcliffe. You, your memory probably goes back to Leslie Saltz, I it think. It does, yes, I remember um, Leslie Saltz. The first of the first a, a string scheme. of things that were proposed and never happened. What are your thoughts on this? There is very little detail on the current scheme. We haven't seen any of the hydrology reports that we need. uh, What's it going to do to coastal erosion further north of Ramsey? Is it going to accelerate that? In which case we'd uh, need to be uh, very wary and uh, weigh up the costs of that. Uh, In terms of employment, it would probably be good for the town. Again, you would have to settle for a change in view, it would certainly have a radical effect on the view seen of the town. We don't know what effect it would have on the inner harbour, what effect it would have on existing businesses in the shipyard who, if that became fully engaged in purely ship work, then as I presume the small businesses that are there would be required to move, which again would be a negative. Where would they go? I think there's far too little detail at the moment, and from the financial information that we gleaned at the public meeting, this scheme simply doesn't stack up at the moment. Mr Doricott and his team seem to have a deal of experience and they did make the point that they were coming out with information at a very early stage to let people know what was going on rather than wait and wait and wait and have the rumour mill going on and then come out somewhere down the line. Are they not giving you what information is available and would be anywhere at this stage? They've given information but it is by no means enough information for anybody to reach a balanced decision on whether it was good or bad. You have to weigh the, the environmental cost against the economic benefit. That is a, going to be a very difficult judgment and at the moment you cannot give a definitive answer on that. I think 
economically it would be good, environmentally it may be a disaster. So we need to have all the facts before we can reach a judgment. I think the details may emerge or will emerge when a planning application is uh, submitted. And an environmental impact study and all, all the things all that go with All those things it. that are associated yeah. with that sort of development. Jennifer Houghton, this is wonderfully things for the Isle of Man's image, wouldn't it, if it had an enormous £100 million marina sitting here 24 hours a day availability? Absolutely. And, and we would help get pe getting people to come here and said, this is what we have to offer, amongst the things. Exactly. I think uh, the beauty of the island, though, is also in its environment. So I, I, I believe, as, as um, I've been listening, it is important to find that balance because the attraction to the island is, it, is the environment. And, and yes, it would be nice to have a marina, but having a, a completed a charity walk around the island on the Radney Foil, which is a 100-mile coastal path, um, one of the points that was raised uh, by a gentleman who's been here for, for 70 years is that uh, the building of the sea terminal, for example, had quite significantly changed the promenade and the front of the Douglas promenade and the seafront because it changed the way that the tides were coming in. So, you know, whatever we do, it will have an environmental impact and it's finding the balance between the two that uh, that we need to think very carefully about. So the beauty of the island for me is actually uh, the people and, and the businesses that we have here, but very much also the landscape and nature around us. That then so far is the story of the latest proposal for a marina in Ramsey. It's certainly different from previous editions. The question is, will it have a positive result from those that have come and gone before? Sail away with me What will be